Whoops. Sorry about that. Yeah, so I was thinking we go with Stunning Garbanzo. But if you want, we could do Relay Chess. No, I'm just kidding. Um, thanks for pointing that out, by the way. So, yeah, I found how we create a new repository. We're going to do an MIT license. I think the git ignore to use, just by default, would be the node git ignore. There's probably one for JavaScript or something, but node is probably right. Um, I really don't know which... We'll see once we have the file what to take out, what to add to it. It'll be okay. Um, and so, yeah, let's create the repository. And it says initial commit. And we see we've got an MIT... Usually it shows MIT license right over here. Not sure why that's not showing. Um, but yeah, if we want to clone or download, here's the URL. Um, and so, um, trying to remember what was next here. I think we have to do git init here as well. Git status. Uh, one second slow mode. Yeah, that isn't that fancy. Um, shoot, I forget how we set this all up. Um, GitHub upload repository. Add the files, commit them. But if it's an existing project, git init, git add, first commit. Oh, right, git commit, add origin. This thing. Oops, git remote add origin. Um, Okay. Verifies the new remote. There it is. Push your changes. But I think since I initiated this on GitHub first, I need to say git pull. And I have to type in the ultra super secret password. Uh, oh, git pull master. Hit pull origin master is the right way to do this. And type the password again. Get status. I'm sorry, get log. Right, so there's the initial commit that was done on GitHub. And then we say get status and we list the things. Get add get status. Now, not all these things want um, makes sense to commit. So we're going to say git reset ahead on HTML and JS and TMP. And so this shows us the list of things to be committed. Um, do all these make sense? Not necessarily. Um, probably want to not include journal or start or status or stop because those are just exclusive to my server or at least my instance um, we don't need to include a zip file anything else oh okay fine yeah we can remove a comment from data.js i see uh, that's totally cool. Global data cache. I assume that's what you were talking about, right? Yeah, not a problem.
<laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, I think we're covered. Um, darn. Well, I guess you're just not going to get to see that then. Uh, get status. Get add data.js. Oops. And we take a look. and just double check. Is that really what we want to commit? Um, it's missing the HTML content, but I can re-add, or I can add that in the next commit if we want. Um, we probably should. But right now, HTML was just a link as opposed to a copy of my web content. Um, yeah, this is probably okay. That looks fine. Get commit, initial commit. Get push origin master. So now I have an offsite copy. Offsite just means not in the same building as my server. So, um, uh, how do I say GitHub follow links? Or, I'm sorry, git follow link. Um, can I do this? Yeah, why not create symbolic links the other way around? Because my source code is in the web directory. I don't want to do it that way. Um, use hard links instead. That's not helpful. With git, there's one case where we will not... Oh. Okay, so actually, does git follow symlinks? Does git follow those? Um, pretty sure there's no way. You can use hard links. Yeah, okay, so... Okay, finally, somebody tries to answer the question. Git just stores the contents of the link in a blob. It stores the name, module, and type. When you check out a tree, it restores it as a symbolic link, regardless of whether the target file system contains that object or not. Um, so... So I guess this means... Um, Git just adds a symbolic link as a symbolic link. Um, git config. If false, symbolic links are checked out as small plane files that contain the link text. Um, so whatever, we'll figure out how to handle HTML content at some point. Maybe what this means is that I actually have to do what's recommended and what actually makes sense. Um, wait, what was in my temp directory again? Okay. Um, See, so yeah, I don't think I need that anymore and I have a backup copy anyhow. Um, I don't need this anymore because this is the unzipped version of the code. And so, yeah, we have my start and stop and all that. And then there's a static content in HTML and JS. Uh, JS just points to the JS directory inside the HTML. Uh, did I ever reference that anywhere? I don't think so. So, probably don't even need that. 
so yeah, I should probably set up this HTML um, the way they're talking about it. Um, I don't think that's going to pose any problems for Apache, but I'm not sure. So if I refresh this, uh, we go back. I'm sorry, we list. Uh, I remove HTML, I copy from var whtml here, and then change directory um, into that directory. Uh, is there any problem here? Oh, I could make, yeah, relay a symbolic link. That's going to be fun. Um, so here's home Leela relay. Um, and so if I want this to symbolic link to anything, um, home relay, HTML relay here. Um, wait, we're not going to remove that. And then we're going to create this link. And if this all works, I should be able to just, yeah. So my web page is still here. And if I open up a new browser and try to navigate to the static content, it's all still there. So everything moved successfully. Um, and so now get status, get add HTML, and we're going to commit the static content. I think that's fine. Okay, yeah, it commits lots of sounds, some assets otherwise. Um, Maybe the sounds don't need to be committed just yet, but it wouldn't hurt to have them. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, there wouldn't be anything stopping us from doing that. And that might even be a reasonable way to go, too. Um, get commit, add static content, push origin. Now, the one thing we might hit with uh, GitHub is some sort of bottleneck um, in terms of how many files they're willing to host, as well as how quickly things download from the GitHub server. Um, while it is reliable, there's nothing saying that when we click things that the server is going to quickly respond to that. Um, but yeah, we can now see if I refresh this, there have been two commits. There was the initial commit that was done by GitHub. Um, I'm sorry, this one. And then this here is where I added all the server-side content, um, or rather the application content. And now if I refresh a third time, we've got static content. And so yeah, there was 566 changed files in this commit. And we see that everything's here, and I have not added a README. Um, add a README. Relay chess. Awesome. Just what we needed. Um, I thought there was some kind of... You gave me something saying, like, what it takes to deploy this. I forget. So, I mean, yeah, there's the MIT license. Feel free to add your name to that. Um, I had some kind of, oh, I forgot. That was that was in the zip file I removed. Um, I need to document what it is that needs to get deployed with RelayChess. Um, so, uh, perhaps I've been too clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I see I'm... Bummer. Um... Well, uh, I mean, the code does 
at least app.js notes what's required in order to deploy the site. Um, I'm just going to add the readme. I don't know, it's kind of silly to have a readme for the sake of just having it. It doesn't say very much. I'm going to cancel. We can add that at a later time. Um, I have to go back through my messages, and I know you messaged me something that links to a zip file, and the zip file contains instructions as to what you have to do to deploy this. So I can add that. Uh, um, I want to add a description here. The future of chess is now. Okay. Uh, just to be dramatic like that. Um, and see. Officially, this is hosted at there. Uh, enter URL. Okay, that's a URL. Future of chess is now. There we go. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, let me add the readme then. Unfortunately, my chat window is not on the same I can't just copy and paste, so I've got to um, got to type this out. Not a problem. Um, let's see dependencies. Mongo DB three two nine. Um, Node JS six five zero. Uh, oh, hang on. Yeah, in fact, database. Server. Dependencies. CO underscore. Uh, MongoDB get everything operational um, to deploy restore the database using uh, mongo restore install node and require dependencies And launch app.js. Ports used. 8080 for login register. Uh, express web server. Um, 3000 for socket server. There you go, and if I preview this, uh, I'm missing a new line. Let's add a new line. There we go. This looks better this way anyhow. Um, Okay, uh, to restore, to deploy, restore the relay chess, um, yeah, it is a database. Uh, there we go. There we go, commit to the master branch, and now we've got a readme file, so people who stumble across this will know what they've run into. Uh, Cool, so that's all uploaded. Uh, so site's up and running. I see Chaos has made a seek out here. Assuming he's still um, here, I'm more than willing to play a game just to make sure it all works. Oh, um, let me see if I can full screen this just to get it to look nice. Sorry, uh, Chrome hardware acceleration disable. Control settings, 
show advanced settings, um, scroll to the system section. Okay, so where's the settings button? Um, advanced settings, Excel. Oh, I've got that disabled. And yet it still somehow prevents me from doing a full screen capture for this. So if I hit F11 and I'm full screen, oh, this works again. Okay. Hey, it looks cool now. That's what matters. And we still have all our sounds there. I have so many extensions that they blocked settings. Oh, that's funny. Didn't know that. I just assumed that the settings button looks different. Huh. Well, like I said, I'm not the greatest web developer ever. Um, so yeah. Oh, let me, before I go too far, pop the batteries out of my controllers next time we play CSD. Uh, we still have batteries left. For whatever reason, this controller loves to eat the battery uh, power. Oh, we got two people seeking a game. Well, Kaz was first, so we're going to play Kaz. Okay, now I can hit the... I can hit the move button when he makes a move. Yeah, that'd just be silly. Um, okay, well, I think that's a reasonable place to put a knight. Oh, I need to add spectating. Um, yeah, no, I'm kind of, it's taking me a second to warm back up and remember, like, all the stuff. Um, there were some cool things that I used to do, and I've since forgotten them. This bishop looks safe here, though, so I'm going to bring it out. Relay chess, um, it's a variant where... If you're attacking a piece, like your queen is, I'm sorry, if your queen is protecting your knight, um, then that knight can move like a queen. So it can go vertically, horizontally, diagonally, or can still move like a knight. Or here, he's got a knight protecting a knight. So that knight can move like a knight, or can move like a knight. Um, I'm making some fun of the situation, just because it is a fun game. Um... <laughs> Yeah, or if I take this on f2, um, his rook protects the bishop, so the bishop could just take me back. So things get pretty crazy pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, knight to f3 is legal. Um, in fact, he could play knight takes f3, though, because his queen defends the knight, so that knight now can move like a queen. Uh, so I should actually probably be careful about where that knight's going. So I'm going to try to keep his knights away from... Oh, hey, look at that! Look at that! It all works! It all works! Oh, that's awesome. Except when pieces move, um, I'm not sure that that's going to get cleared. Okay, it did get cleared. Oh, hey, look! Oh well, what can you do? Pawns, yeah, pawns only move like pawns. And pawns do not confer their powers to other pieces. Oh, um, let's see, inspect. So let me pop this open, just to do some profiling of the game. Um, let's see, how do you do profiling again? I forget. Yeah, so let's record CPU utilization or usage. Yeah, you're absolutely right that I just out and out didn't see E5 was hanging, so... I kind of messed that up pretty badly. Yeah. 
Um, and so I don't want him to take f6 and then double my pawns, so I'm just going to take this outright. Oh, you didn't see. Um, yeah, my move was to castle. Uh, I completely overlooked the fact that this bishop over here is pretty strong. Is it not relaying the moves to you? Oh. Oh, goodness. Um... Castles does not yet have a move indication. Wait, what? Oh, I can't take that because... Yeah, very clever. I have the sense that I'm going to lose this game. I'm probably correct. <laughs> no, it's not mate because the bishop can't move like a rook. His rook can move like a queen, but just because this queen protects the rook doesn't mean that the rook confers powers to the bishop. On the other hand, if you switch this around and this were a queen in the quarter, I would be in a worse situation, although technically it's still not mate. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is the future of chess, guys. It's absolutely nuts. Okay, we're just going to run, run, run. As fast as you can. Okay. Uh, I don't understand why he's playing that so aggressively. I'm just going to back up. And pretend that everything's okay. Oh, I missed rook takes g7. No, okay. So just sending the server FEN every move to avoid weirdness of ampersand. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable thing to do. Um, at least I see no harm to it. The only harm is that, I mean... Producing the FEN and then the, having the client decipher it could be a little expensive. Um, but since we're in this stage of the program, project, whatever, at this point, um, performance really isn't the greatest concern. Uh, also, speaking of performance, let me stop my performance logging. Um, okay... So let's just develop the knight over here. Just cover a lot of things. <sighs> so when a queen protects a piece, pretty much that piece always moves like a queen. So the more pieces you have your queen protecting, um, the more queens you have in effect. Uh, I'm not going to have a queen for much longer, am I? Okay. I got a couple pieces for it, so that's not terrible. This could have been a lot worse, I suppose. But yeah, I think you're right that um, to avoid weirdness, uh, it makes sense to provide redundant information until said weirdness has been resolved. And then once it's resolved, then just do things um, the most efficient way. But in the interim, by all means, transmit as much info as we need to send. Oh, so I could develop my bishop on the long diagonal. Why not? Yeah, get some open lines here. Open lines are awesome. Um, okay, so I can't capture that, and it is threatening to take here. 
Um, why don't I go here? I think this is okay. Oh, is the title not Real HS? I thought I changed it to Real HS. Um, in fact, yeah, I did. Oh, you're trying to change it to Real Chess instead of Relay. That's that's funny. Victory! Awesome. Um, but yeah, the more important factor here, and I don't think this is captured on screen. Um, so, okay, now we got the full screen capture thing going on. So we're able to see um, how much CPU is utilized. I think these are all the low level points in the program. And so we see that like a great deal of the CPU is spent on these things like get piece attackers and on digest. Some of these things are completely unavoidable since in the course of a game, yeah, there's unfortunately no time warning. That'd be a cool thing to add to. Um, um, but we're able to see that this is called from this, called from this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so we learn just what consumes the most CPU. Um, so we have an anonymous function here in play controller, which says for each square, Oh, shoot, I've been meaning to ask about some of this. I was reading through some of the code, and we see like little notes on the margin of how things uh, perform. Um, what was I about to ask? I did end up making one change, not in this file, but um, in chess.js. Can we go over there? Um, Yes, yeah, so I added this. Uh, I changed in threefold repetition. This used to go through the entire course of the game and check has there been a threefold as of this current position. And now I'm saying just go back to the last capture or the last pawn move looking for threefold. And don't go any further. Um, uh, just, that just. Um, that was in light of this comment here where. I don't even know if you or somebody, some previous developer added this. Uh, and yeah, I agree, Zobrist keys would improve performance too, but I tweaked this here. Uh, let's not make that code change. Um, but yeah, there was, I've been meaning to ask, does this make sense? I think it does. Um, that we don't need to go back the entire course of the game looking for threefold. Um, but that actually reminds me I meant to ask also about something weird I saw in Play Controller. I'm struggling to remember what. Um, but I was looking through this profiling tool, trying to figure out, like, is there a more efficient way to write some of these things that are demonstrably using CPU? Oh, wait. I think it's coming back to me. Something about the move generation and checking is something a pawn. This is actually in chess.js now that I remember it. Um, where was it? So there's generate moves. Obviously, it's going to spend some CPU cycles. Um, what did I change here? Uh, something about when we were checking for a pawn. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, let's see, was this it? I think I moved this up a level. It used to be, we used to calculate this expression down here and then check, like, are we a pawn afterward? Um, let me see if I can find this elsewhere. Yeah, here it was. So here we are in get piece attackers. And I saw that we were frequently doing this bit shift thing and then checking 
is piece type a pawn. And so this particular line of code was consuming a ton of cycles. And so I just moved this uh, if statement outside of this um, such that we don't shift if the piece that we're encountering is a pawn. And so I was just wondering, is, does that make sense to take these four lines that used to be down here and move them up here? I think so. I didn't entirely understand what I was coding. I was just looking at the profiling and seeing like um, where CPU was being spent. And now I see, like, obviously determining what's attacking which square and which color is pretty important. And so it's probably difficult to improve on this further. Um, but yeah, it's saying that throughout the course of a minute, we spent like half a second inside this particular statement. And that's probably unavoidable. Well, so what I was thinking regarding the whole threefold thing is like, say that a capture just occurred. If you go previous to that capture, you're not going to hit that same position again because there's more pieces on the board. Um, and likewise, if there's been a pawn move, you're not going to hit that same position again because there's no way to get the pawn to go backward. Or um, perhaps in light of an example here, that might make more sense. Like, I just took a pawn on e4. So if I undo this knight takes e4 um, and I go any further back in the move history, I'm never going to hit this position because white always had a pawn on e4 or on e3 or e2 or d3 or somewhere behind here. Um, basically, each time a piece gets taken, there's fewer pieces on the board. And so there's no need to go back any further to look for threefold, I think. That's just my guess. And I guess if I introduce a defect, we'll see it sooner or later. Um, but yeah, I've just been trying to look through this and because I saw the other day, like it was Monday or something, people were saying that somehow things weren't performing so well. And I'm not sure whether that's my ISP, my server, or the application itself. Um, yeah, no, I'm totally with you. I'm kind of surprised um, the chess.js repo doesn't check that. Although maybe it doesn't keep track of the half move clock. I don't know. But yeah, I think that would be a nice improvement overall, not just for relay chess. Uh, that's kind of why I was so surprised that uh, apparently the code does what it does. Um, but yeah, I guess this is unavoidable. This check, huh? For i equals squares dot a eight, i is less than or equal squares at h one. Yeah, I'll take a look through some of this and see maybe there's some way I can improve upon that. But really, the root cause probably isn't optimizing this much further. Uh, the root cause is probably figuring out which things are calling chess.js, perhaps unnecessarily. Um, so... Yeah, I guess that's why I'm bringing this up and having played a game, now I'm able to look and see um, which of these things might not be entirely necessary. Oh, oh, um, so here we are. We're calling chess to desks uh, from play controller. I get that at some point we're gonna wanna have some sort of move list on the side or rather, maybe we're communicating all the moves with the server in SAN, and so this is unavoidable. Um, in which case, that's just unfortunate. Um, clean move. So, yeah, I think this is where we're... Oh. Oh, is this the performance thing? That's interesting. So, well, no, that's, I'm sorry, that's milliseconds, not um, in contrast to what we were looking at earlier. Um, what we were looking at earlier was this here, which, 
Oh, this is also milliseconds. I thought that said seconds. Never mind then. Yeah, so where's all my performance um, penalty? I mean, yeah, get peace attackers is going to consume some CPU cycles. And I guess the key is figuring out, is that necessary? Um, and if we're, I guess what we're, we're saying is we're going to print um, a move that that's going to take some cycles. And that's just unavoidable. Um, yeah, I might do some more performance tuning at some point. Um, I'm not sure what more to do about that. But I think that overall, this um, we see that there's tons of idle time, which is good. And like the CPU is burning, um, let's see, it's 2726 versus 202, uh, eight, wait, 202, so this is six digits, that's four digits, so it's like 1% of the time the CPU is being used. Um, so, I don't know, any performance penalties that this is taking probably don't matter. Um, there might be ways to improve it further. But yeah, we played that for the course of a minute and didn't see any huge performance issues. So the code probably performs fine. And I'm probably just being, I don't know, overly critical for no reason. Um, so. Yeah, at some point I've got to add... Oh, that's cool. Ready. Yeah, that's pretty cool too. Alright, I see you got some more challenges out there. Um, oh, both challenges have disappeared, probably meaning that one of the players accepted the other's challenge. Um, which is a good thing. So, yeah. Now that we've agreed upon a license and I've upload the code and we've got um, the code in a common place. Uh, we can both freely contribute to it as our time is available to do so. Um, one thing that might actually make this more interesting for me coding wise is just like if I'm able to view the games and so maybe I'll focus on that. Maybe I'll focus on being able to spectate what's going on. Um, uh, without having to resort to um, hey, come on. I was going to be cool and all that. And then my autocomplete didn't work. So, yeah, we can see just what the status of this process is. You can see people are moving. Um, you see that the times are represented. It probably is floating point values. And let's see. Yeah, there's like to improve the server side game handling. I'm actually kind of impressed that it was entirely done in Node.js. I'm surprised. I'm impressed, surprised, and horrified to learn that you can actually write full applications in JavaScript uh, for servers, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Say you'd like to move the code into the game class. Um, so specifically what you're probably talking about is like taking some of the code out of presumably app.js and moving it somewhere. Um, Oh, I, actually, I haven't taken any time to, well, hang on, git pull origin master, and we pull down the latest changes, uh, uh, which includes the readme. But yeah, I haven't taken time to ask, like, how any of this was structured. Um, I 
Oh, and I also didn't take a look at the git ignore file. Okay, so node modules are ignored. Um, that's pretty cool. So move the code from handle games.js into game.js. Okay. Oh, you're talking about the socket server. <laughs> Congrats on catching my rating, Cass. Um, yeah, it's definitely a change from C++. Um, I've been meaning to ask, how is authentication done? Um, for, I'm kind of wondering, is there, right now the RealHS server requires using two servers. Oh, in fact, I forgot, now that we've agreed this is MIT licensed and all that, um, there's no harm in me showing the source code here uh, on stream. Earlier I was a bit hesitant to do so because I didn't know. Uh, it's using JWT. Java Window Toolkit? I don't know. JWT. JWT. Okay. Apparently I can't do that in full screen mode. Uh, JSON Web Tokens. Cool. RFC 7539. So yeah, I can learn about that at my leisure. Um, don't need to burden you too much with that. Uh, what I was trying to figure out is, do we actually need an express authentication server? Or would it somehow be possible? One thing I want to do is I don't want my instance to be collecting uh, passwords. Just because uh, I know it's crazy, but there is some, some risk even in collecting the passwords. And so I'm kind of thinking on my own, I can spend some time learning about 2FA. Uh, I could authenticate over the socket. Oh, so you mean I could use like server side authentication because I am using Apache. So I could, well, yeah, I could somehow use, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, you're saying I could authenticate using the socket server. You're right. That's true. Um, so yeah, I was wondering maybe if I do it that way, if I authenticate with the socket server, I could also push 2FA into the socket server. Um, yeah, right, right. It's funny. Um, I've seen password implementations though. Even when you salt it and even when, I don't know, you could use rainbow tables and you can hack those things. It's tons of computing work, but there still is some risk involved. Um, but yeah, I guess you're probably right. I just shouldn't worry about it. And I guess that'd be a longer term objective for me anyway, just because I want to learn some stuff about 2FA. I noticed that more and more applications and servers are going that way anyhow. Um, but yeah, if multiple people had the same password, unless they're using different salt, um, you could still recover. If you knew one person's password, you could recover a different person's password. Um, yeah, and probably most people have the common sense. OAuth is, yeah, I remember reading about OAuth a little bit. Uh, I can't spell OAuth. Right, and you use a third-party service to perform the login. Yeah, I remember I did do some... I did read about that some time ago. Or Auth0. Okay, I didn't know about that one. Um, what is this? Single sign-on and token-based authentication. Okay, what's the point? Um, 
Okay, they've done tons of libraries. They've got tons of documents. Add mobile authentication or add authentication to your web and mobile apps in under 10 minutes. Um, okay. Where's the FA? Okay. Free. Start now. Up to 7,000 regular active users per month. Um, I think the point here is that the way it works is you're logging in with their service. Which um, just might do Google login, so you're not responsible for passwords. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Um, it's nice for secure authentication even without TLS. Okay. Overview. Choose identity providers. Choose the SDK or call their API. Uh, hook it up to their API. I see. So you get to choose. Oh, you can authenticate with a variety of services. Um, that's pretty cool. Sure, it's a little bit of work to set it up, but what isn't? Um, and so yeah, you could log in using a third-party service instead of yourself being the authenticator. Okay, so that's the point. So that's something to think about. That's got to be convenient for people who use the internet. Um, because people who use the internet likely have one of those services. Um, so yeah, I can explore that too. Um, probably I'd still end up going with 2FA because people might not want to use their Google account. They might not want to use their Facebook. I don't know. So it probably would make sense for me to still try to go some sort of 2FA route. Um, Right, yeah, it doesn't need to be the greatest focus, especially not for you at the moment. Um, but yeah, long term, if this ever gains some traction, I still have the ability to um, not have the passwords on my disk if that's um, long term where we're going. Um, I'm, I'm able to make that change if I need to. Um, and probably I will toy around with 2FA and see if I can get it working at some point. Um, so, yeah, and you were mentioning that it'd be nice to move some of the socket server code into some game handler. Um, just so the socket server is not enormous, I suppose. Um, and so that maybe things get published better. Um, actually, that makes me think. Word count. Um, so, um, start at JS and then socket server start at JS. Yeah, one thing I might look into in any event is. Um, simplifying the login or simplifying the deployment process so I don't have two servers. Um, check out join game in the handle games.js. Okay, so we see that we've got 3,000 lines of code uh, total for this entire uh, server. One thing I might look into doing and if I just understand the API that we're using is, um, I might look into porting this to, <laughs> uh, well, I'm just not so familiar with Node. Um, I know I can learn Node, it's not a problem, but I'm questioning, I mean, I know Node is a, it performs well. I'm just trying to understand, is that, the best platform for this. Um, 
I might separately look into like copying the API and making a different server implementation that, yeah, it's a ton of code. <laughs> I might look into finding a way to like port this to Scala or something else. Um, just cause, uh, to give you some idea, uh, whoops. Well, yeah, I think this is okay. Um, so things were happening at a server level like this. Um, well, not necessarily this, but other errors have been thrown out of the JavaScript itself. And JavaScript isn't really the most robust language ever. So I might look into trying to do something a little bit more, more robust. Um, but that's obviously going to be a huge endeavor to change it. Um, But yeah, I might look into trying to do things um, in a way that, I don't know. Moving to TypeScript, etc. Yeah. So I'll, I'll explore that a little bit just out of my own curiosity. Um, 